I'm sick of your Scooby-Doo bullshit. We all are MJF. We literally all are. I'm John Renton with my review of AEW Dynamite from the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. A 20,000 seat building with around 5,000 people, according to WrestleTix. Vern Gagne is shrieking from the depths of hell trying to yell, Greg, what the hell did you allow to have happen to my promotion? I want to make you the mainstay, but nobody would accept you. You were my George Goulos to my Nichols. What the hell are you doing? And Greg would shout down, Dad, you've been dead for nearly a decade. And the company died 30 plus years ago. Enough about AWA history, even though Vern Gagne could have had that company go to massive, massive, just insane success if he had just put the belt on Hulk Hogan in 1983, but that's a whole other story. Let's talk about AEW. They can't, they can't even put more than 5,000 people in an nba size arena. They have to start running some smaller arenas. I mean, my God, when I was there for Collision and WrestleDream, the combined attendance was barely more than 1,000 people above what they had for Dynamite, on January 4th. It's hard to believe, I can't believe that it's been almost a year since I was at that incredibly loud and raucous Dynamite show the same day as Wrestle Kingdom. So yeah, let's talk about this show. There were some good moments, but honestly, AEW programming is really starting to reek of the last two years of WCW. Some good moments, but just overall, the backstage bullshit, a lot of the stuff, and the fact that a lot of the wrestlers really just seem to be me, 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 no wee, wee, wee. There are a few that want to try to make the show better. If you don't see me review AEW for the last couple weeks of December, don't be shocked. I might just have to take a break. Maybe I'll re review World's End. I don't know. I just... Anyway, let's just get to the goddamn show now. So, the N Continental, aka not G1, is continuing... And sponsored by Woo Energy. Yeah, that crowd really did feel small. It really did. And anyway, so Danielson, the R American Dragon, because he's got the eye patch on, because he's coming back from yet another injury. And I really hope that he can do well in this not G1 and get to facing Okada in the Dome, because this is pretty much going to be the last shot. I don't think he's going to ever get a chance to be in the Dome again. So it's uh, John Moxley versus Jay Lethal. It's a Gold League match in the Not G1. I get to wrestle Black Machismo. <laughs> Badass. And Lethal targeted the knee. I mean, he did taunt a little bit too much. Moxley was favoring the knee. Uh, I was actually worried that he might have legit hurt it. <clears throat> I guess he was just selling. And then Moxley tries to fight back, but then Lethal keeps targeting it. Even goes for the figure four. And then a pair of dimes shift. A... A big old King Kong lariat, according to Excalibur. And then we get the pile driver for two. And then we get the choke. And that wins it. It wasn't a bad match. I don't really have much of a investment in Lethal. And Mox is pretty much just Mox. I mean, I'm, I'll give him credit. He didn't bleed during this. That's amazing. So, yeah, six for Mox, uh, zero for Lethal. I'm not going to figure out these tiebreakers. I don't have the patience. I, I just don't. It's like... It's hard to do in the G1, and I don't trust Khan to really do. Eh. He, It's a good idea to not have the interference happen and everything, but maybe maybe if interference hadn't constantly happened for the last four goddamn years on their various programs, maybe, maybe that would mean something more. Because I don't see it as a breath of fresh air. I feel like they're like, oh, shit, we've had too much. We've made our referees look like idiots. <clears throat> Let's just do this. So anyway, um, Eddie was upset after losing to Brody King. I did see some of Collision. I didn't review Collision and Rampage. I was reviewing Survivor Series, and also I just I don't. There's only so many hours in a goddamn day. I just didn't feel like reviewing the show last week. So if I don't review Collision for the rest of the year, don't be shocked. So anyway, Danielson. However, he is laser focused. Kingston's like I wasn't going to expect an easy path to victory i'm gonna have to get a whole lot better but danielson is laser focused angry anger angry the r american dragon as i said and then shivani um talks about matches in greensboro how wrestling history you know goes through greensboro north carolina here's sting and flair sting was very fired up because greensboro is gonna be the home for revolution 
on March 3rd. That's going to be Sting's last ever match, and he really shouldn't wrestle anymore after that. I think Flair was drunk, high, or both. He definitely wasn't on enough woo energy unless the mushroom component that is in those that overtakes the minds, like in The Last of Us, got into Flair's head. But then again, how would we be able to tell? <laughs> Flair, good God. I, it would be sad if this wasn't Flair's fault that he ended up like this. And Flair is one of the greatest of all time. I don't have any sympathy for Flair. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. This was really sad. And then Mark Briscoe took on Roosh. Okay, so at least there was a you know decent clash of styles here. And at first it was fine. There was a nice jump start. Both were laying it in. Hard chops goes into the barricade. Um, Mark does a you know elbow drop to the floor. Um, there was a <laughs> there was a hard lariat, and then Mark put his um, gum back in his mouth. I don't know why that was so funny to me. Made the goddamn, uh, you know, made the people laugh. You know, the commentary, that is. And Roosh was favoring his knee. Might have tweaked it a little bit. <laughs> it did get a bit messy near the end. But Roosh then, after kicking out of the Froggy Bow 2, ends up, you know, doing the bow, you get the horns, and right in the corner, there you go. So Roosh has three and Mark has zero. So Mark hopefully will at least get up to like nine points or something. I mean, I know that he's no spring chicken. And that's not a knock. That's not a pun either. But I really think Mark Briscoe would be better to be featured in this. Nothing against Roosh. Roosh is good. But maybe the story, maybe that old, you know, ship has sailed on telling a good story of Mark Briscoe. Anyway, uh, backstage with uh, Tony Storm, Mariah May, uh, Luther for some reason, and RJ City, and Tony, gee, Jesus Christ, Tony Storm, Jesus fucking Christ, Tony Storm. She was having fun with this. Uh, being composed, being around Tony Storm would be difficult, but thankfully her and Juice Robinson are very happy together, and hopefully Juice Robinson, if he needs you know back surgery, his injury necessitates it, hopefully he can recover and be back 100% as soon as possible. Uh, they're gonna. Uh, Tony's gonna have a title match next week. So then, um, and the shoes are off or whatever because her feet were hurting, and the announcer said that gout can be tough. That made the other announcer crack. I think I believe Taz said that Excalibur cracked, and then Shivani showed up. MJF comes out to a pop. Three hundred seventy-five days as world champ. That will probably end at World's End, which at least he will have four hundred days as world champ. <coughs> He has a bad hip and a torn labia. I think I said that right. No, it's, in all seriousness, his hip has been popping out. His knee's been, you know, floating around. And he says that apparently he does have a partially torn labrum. Now, if he can, you know, work through this and get to 500 days as champ, great. But it almost feels like Samoa Joe probably should be the one to beat him. Because then he can get the time off. He can get the surgeries. He can do whatever. <clears throat> I just, I just want, I want him to not only have a long career, a long career where he's as healthy as possible. I want him to have a long life because he's a great spokesperson for Jewish people. He really does stand up for a lot of great causes, and he really does have that movie star quality. And I just hope that MJF can be healthy. I just say that as a human being. So he talks about Samoa Joe, his time in TNA, <clears throat> and how he never became a world champion in WWE. Technically, the NXT Championship doesn't really count, I guess. And then Joe broke the mold. He thanks Joe, even though it pains him to do so. And MJF said, well, he's helped build this place brick by brick. He mentions Cody. even mentions Punk, which is nice. Um, remind him that uh, a guy that was run out of the company by egos. I'm not saying the Punk was uh, totally without blame, but they're reaping what they sow. And... He will. He promises to give Joe everything he has at World's End, and that if he wants what he has, he's going to have to basically kill him for it. And then the lights out, and then the Devil's Group shows up, and then Joe's music hits, and Joe is instantly there. Apparently, he was sitting behind the announcer's table or something. And then we get a typed out thing, <coughs> where basically they said, "You want to find out about the unknown? Well, are you a hero, Max? How about you face me in a tag match next week? You and Samoa Joe face me." So, I'm guessing the devil is going to probably be Jack Perry. 
Some people suggested that the devil might actually be Tony Khan. Let me tell you right now, if the devil is Tony Khan, then he pulls off something worse than the higher power, being Vince McMahon. Also, <clears throat> want to make mention here real quick, unless something changes, I have a lot of open shifts, differing shifts next week, so I actually will be able to watch Dynamite Live for one week only next week, so that's going to be interesting. Hopefully they actually reveal who the devil is. I don't think they will, but at least it would be interesting to see. So MJF then says he's sick of his Scooby-Doo bullshit and that I will unmask you. <clears throat> You've got the match. Joe isn't very happy because he wants MJF at 100% or at least as healthy as possible. Do they unmask the devil next week? If they do, I'm going to tell you right now, if it is Tony Khan, I might just actually just, I, I might lose it. I'm Even if it's Jack Perry, I might actually lose it and just say, this is the most hilarious thing and this is approaching WCW 2000. There's no way this can end well. This is basically the Black Scorpion, except more people were watching WCW at that time. Wardlow then uh, beat up the lovely AR Fox. Okay, that's all you're going to get. You know who you are. And Fox does jump start. He does hit a nice 450 at one point, but basically Wardlow gloms him. He hits two power bombs. He hits the Centon, <clears throat> hits a last ride power bomb, and then the referee calls it. So that's it. Thanks for coming, AR Fox. He got back on TV, turned heel, got beat up, and tried to apologize to Darby. Nick Wayne then turned heel, and man, they don't know what to do with a lot of people. I'm not saying AR Fox, by the way could be a world champion, but Jesus, they run through a lot of shit. Anyway, speaking of a lot of shit, like the injury that Dante Martin suffered, that was some horrific shit. Glad he's back. He got a big pop, him and Darius, because they're from Minnesota, <coughs> Minneapolis seemingly, or nearby. The Hardys and Isaiah Cassidy, that's, that's what I'm calling him. I'm not going to call him Brother Zay beyond saying that, because that is stupid. Uh, but then again, fits with the Hardys right now in 2023. So maybe the you know the name fits you know for being really stupid. Top action flight, top flight, and action and ready. The Hardys cannot move anymore. The Hardys need to stop wrestling. I am dead serious. Stop fucking wrestling. Jeff should not be in a ring. He can't move. He crashed at one point trying to do a die. You know, trying to do a spot to stop a you know stop a Dante from jumping in the ring. They built a Dante getting the hard, or the hard tag, the hot tag, that is, and then he can still fly. I'm glad he's doing well. Hopefully he can kind of limit, you know, the high, high spots to really, really big moments and not do anything like that destroyer through the tables off the ladder like he did. That was stupid, and there's no way it could have ended well. I'm just glad the young man's recovered. Um... Darius hit the steps at one point pretty violently. I hope he's all right. And then it was a full Nelson drop. One, two, three. So Dante got the victory. Uh, Isaiah Cassidy took the pin. Neither Hardy should be in the fucking ring anymore. And it's, it's, it would be sad if it wasn't so pathetic. So anyway, backstage. Um, Penta, Vikino, and Commander challenged top action flight at some point. I don't know when. I zoned out. So then Julia Hart took on Emi Sakura in a House Rules TBS Championship match where Emi selected the rule that you can't win by submission. And Julia Hart won. I I don't hate Emi as a person. I hate her presentation and I can't I can't stand I she annoys me. As a character, she annoys me. Yeah, Julia Hart won. So, that, and hopefully Julia maybe, you know, does that moonsault a little bit better next time because Emmy actually had to move into position because Emmy was too far inward. And I've seen Julia hit that pretty goddamn good. So, Mariah May goes into Tony Khan's office and Shivani says, I hope she's not interrupting a meeting. No, don't worry, Shivani. That was the previous legal counsel, Mega. Allegedly. Cover my ass here. So... The patriarch Christian Cage shows up to respond to Copeland. He has security. He says, Adam, please come out. Adam. And then the crowd's going, Adam. So Copeland shows up, all pissed. And then Christian does this really, I encourage you guys to check this out because it's really good as far as a promo, as far as just talking about the history. We won't make it to Montreal, that he's sorry, that 
you know, it, it, this is obviously all the rumors. The crowds are chanting bullshit. <clears throat> Talks about, you know, taking a road trip of reflection. Their time on the road. They drove the mom's Taurus, Toby the Taurus, and that you know they've been friends for forty years. Uh, Copeland lost his mother recently, and that you know you didn't have a dad. That I'm your brother. My father raised you and disciplined you like he like you were his son. Let's team one last time. Team one last time for your mother. Your mother wanted to see it. And then he tries to hit him with the TNT Championship. And then Copeland knew it was coming. Low blowed him. <coughs> and they slid down his body. And oh, I haven't seen that much 50-year-old uh, on 50-year-old man action since. Well, let's delete our search history and just ignore that. But yeah, that was some uh, nice Canadian bacon on bacon action. And then he... <laughs> Copeland says... Nice try, dumbass. It's like, shine this up real good, go to sleep, and like, the next week I'm taking it. Oh, by the way, go fuck yourself. And the person in the truck was not good enough to hit the mute. They are going to really make it difficult for Warner Brothers Discovery to want to increase their deal or even renew their deal much longer if they don't stop doing this. They have been warned to stop doing this. <sighs> So, good, good, good job there. And I'm not even knocking Copeland. I'm just, there's got to be structure there. But then we get to the main event, and woo hoo hoo, swerves when he drives. He's on a crutch. Oh my. And he swerves when he drives, and he swerves when, and that's all I'm going to say there because Nana's out there on a crutch, but you can't have people out at ringside because no seconds, no interference. Swerve versus Jay White in the Gold League. Look, my opinion of Jay White has and never will change. It hasn't changed and it will never change. I recognize he has in-ring talent. I recognize there are people to like him. 13 minutes left. It, uh, <clears throat> they said we're going to stick with it. So 20-minute time limit. They could have timed this a little bit better, but nevertheless. Jay gets sent into the crowd to take a switchblade home night. Um, then... Jay does his usual stuff, which is fine, but it's boring. And then Swerve later gets the arm, snap, you sick buck, you sick buck. Stomp for two, Blade Runner, Swerve rolls to the outside because he swerves when he drives okay, enough of that. And they go a little bit more back and forth, and then they trap pin, one, two, three, and Swerve has six points, Jay has three. That's about all the analysis any Jay White match is going to get. That being said, not a terrible episode of Dynamite, but... Does AEW just feel like it's just rudderless right now? Like it just <coughs> needs a big push into 2024? I'm not just talking the dog days of winter. Like it, the shows have felt like this for a while. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rethlin. Who do you think the devil is? Let me know in the comments. See you soon.